This sode would not be possible without the support of our listeners, patrons, and sponsors. If you'd like to find out more about supporting the 3-Bit Gamer Show, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash 3BG. And a huge shout-out goes to the big, bad, boss-level patrons, Christopher the Contemptible, Painbringer Patrick, Sinister Skyler, and our newest boss, Steven the Skull Smasher. Dude, it's episode 300. Uh, no, it was episode 300. We friggin' missed it. This is episode 301. Ugh. Can we, like, rewind, go back? Maybe we, like, delete an ev- older episode? Like, maybe the Rick-, Rick and Morty episode? Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone would miss it. Okay, so here we are. Episode 300. Whew. It's nice. It's like, kind of like we're standing on top of a mountain, you know? Dude, it feels exactly like that. Only place to go from here is down. Oh, man. I cannot wait to go downhill for another three episodes with you, man. Me too, buddy. Me too. You've just logged into the Three Bit Gamer Show. <laughs> Welcome to the Three Bit Gamer Show. I'm JD. This is Peterson, and uh, we are here to continue the downhill slide we've been on for five years no, now. Guys, this is the t- peak. If you think things have gone downhill, oh, you have no idea. You you don't know how low we can go. <laughs> buckle, buckle up. <laughs> Live from the Three Bit Gamer Show. The news. All right. Our news this week, as with all weeks, is brought to us by Crave. Crave Cookies. Crave! Uh, Crave Cookies is this awesome cookie shop who gave me the low down hookup on their cookie calendar Ayo. where I can go view all the cookies. That are coming out for the week. Um, and I think I'm figuring it out. For some reason, Trent put the cookies. The most recent ones are all the way at the bottom. Look, everyone organized their Google Sheets differently. <laughs> some people do it objectively wrong like Trent. Here's Nothing what I'll say can... about Google Sheets. Excel documents, anything like that. Everyone, if if someone else hands you theirs, you mm-hmm. always look at it and you're like, what? If these you just sneer. This sucks. Every yeah. time. Corner of your oh. mouth goes up. You're like, what the fuck? What the fuck am I looking at? It's idiots. Idiots. So I don't know. This may be. I think what I'm looking at here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so this is what we got coming up. I'm just going to throw these out here Do in it. the nebulous week or so, because I think has two different menus or whatever. This is what you might have coming up. A S'morios, okay. a Twix, a Biscuit Doodle. Okay. Uh, strawberry shortcake, yep. Samoa. Oh, that's a good one. And the Scotch rookie, also an Oreo cheesecake in there. So is that yeah. one new? No, that one's not new. No, that one's been around for a minute. So that is uh, what's coming up. Go to cravecookies.com, uh, and you can get delivery if you're here in Utah. And he's spread. He man, he's opening a couple new shops up really soon. So check out cravecookies.com and see if there's any coming. And opening near you soon. An attempted cash grab by Wizards of the Coast may have just gutted the D&D community. Whew. Did you see this? I did not. They. This is. What are they doing? Okay, so I don't know if you knew this, but you know that Wizards of the Coast is the company that owns and manages the D&D like property. Yeah. Did you know that Hasbro of Monopoly fame, owns Wizards of the Coast? I did not know that. I also did not know that. I thought Hasbro was like, made a couple board games and that was it. Apparently, no. Uh, Hasbro has, uh, you know, surveyed over their properties and decided that this one they've locked in on, D&D, is not making them as much money as it could make them. Wow. So previously... Uh, D&D has operated under an OGL, which is an o- open game license, and, and which meant that anyone could create D&D themed content for free. 
you guys may be familiar with like a million podcasts that do D and D like play uh, D and D for the podcast animated shows. They sell merch, they sell things and they're basically selling it all off the platform that is D and D. Now, if you're not aware D and D is not necessarily like one big storyline that everyone's playing along with. It's not world of Warcraft or anything like that. Like I said, it's a platform and everyone goes and makes their own stories and storylines and tells their own tales and fables. And basically what it provides is a, is a framework uh, on which to build the world where you're telling that story. If I, I've got that right, right? I feel like, Peterson, you have slightly more D&D experience than I do. <laughs> yeah, very little more. But yeah, and yeah, I think that's right. And when it comes to video games and stuff, right, it's they're just using yeah. the methodology, D&D so methodology. The- that's right. It. So for the first time in 22 years, uh, Hasbro's taking a look at this OGL and they're like, hmm, uh, maybe we could be making a little bit more, more money. So under this new updated agreement, companies that make over $750,000 will have to start paying Hasbro a 25% cut of their earnings. Sounds familiar. It's like the uh, the Apple App Store Steam yeah. cut. Everyone just wants a cut for doing nothing. It's fucking awesome. Uh, it's a, and so this is, oh man, this is such a good quote. This was in the, uh, this came out of a, a December investor call with Hasbro quote, uh, the D and D strategy is a broad four quadrant. Mm, I'm sorry. I'm not doing the right voice for this. Um, the D and D strategy is a broad four quad quadrant strategy where we have this powerful brand that has similar awareness, say like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, and we're going to imbue it with the blockbuster entertainment. This comes from Hasbro CEO Chris Cox. That is not, for you guys that think it's spelled C-O-X, it is not. How is it spelled? Chris Cox. Now I'm sure. And he is just a big bag of cocks. <laughs> Dude, seriously, he just basically turned his, his, his eye, his Sauron eye, and he looked over D and D, and he's like, "That could make us money." That's literally it. He's like, "It's got the brand awareness. It's gonna make us money." Uh, even though it hasn't, there, I, I think they're trying to make a TV series, which is really missing the point of D and D. If that's, I'm not, yeah, that's not what D and D is. Yeah, who should be making the TV D, TV series? Is a group of people who have been playing it, and people can watch how their game unfolds. But it's not. It, there's not stories that I know of that are necessarily like beyond like, here's the, you know, the thing you need to go kill or whatever. Uh, huh. yeah. So I don't know. There are obviously a bunch of petitions that don't mean anything that have already come out in the tens of thousands of people are like, Hey, you should overturn this new licensing agreement. We're not going to sign into this. Um, I will say I, I even though D and D is the be all end all, uh, of this role playing universe, it's been around for forty plus years. I think I can't say that if this is really the direction that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro are going to go, that a new re- a new plate replacement couldn't just step in and fill the. Oh, there are so many, yeah, replacements out there. Some of them are good, some of them are not. Right? But yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, look, they're playing with fire here, man. Well, and and what's going to happen is people are just going to stop. So, like, think like a professional DM or something like that, which they exist, and I don't think they're going to make oh, absolutely seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? But just in case, they're going to be like, oh, they're they're not they're not going to say we're going to do a D and D campaign. They're like, we're just going to do a role playing tabletop campaign. Yeah. They can use D and D methodology if they want, but they don't have to, right? They just pull all the licensing stuff off of, oh, I made my own character sheets, that sort of thing, whatever. Or they could just go off and use a different system altogether. Dude, uh, who, who was our friend in tabletop design that made the like that really cool Azul overlay that they sent? he sent us? Um, uh, that was uh, Daniel, right? Uh, is that Daniel? Yeah. So if say a company like that. Where you make peripherals or whatever you would call them, yeah, add-ons or whatever for D and D campaigns. And what Hasbro decides that like because you put some sort of D and D branding on your 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 website that they're like we get a cut. Oh, well, you owe us money now. What? 
dude, I don't think that goes, I don't think that sits well with a community like this. It's just tone deaf for the community because the community is so strong. Yeah. Right? The people who love it, love it, love it, mm-hmm. love it. And so, yeah, it's super tone deaf. Like, why are you shooting yourself in the foot? Just like, because you want to be greedy saying we could be making more money. Are you not making any money? Like you about to shut down. Like that's different. But if, if not, which is not the case, if not, then just, Hey, just ride what you've got. Got a good thing. Let it go. <laughs> you got a good, you got, yeah. Look at this, this motherfucker. I'll send you this. <laughs> it's Chris Cox. He looks like his name is Chris Cox. He looks like his name has been Chris Cox for his whole life. And he's just lived it. And people have been letting him know. Yeah. And he knows. He's Chris oh Cox. Oh, my gosh. This guy is. <laughs> this guy Look is Mr. Dick Cox. Dude, I can't believe his name is spelled like that, too. Isn't that funny? Just he just C-O-C-K-S. owns it. C-O-C-K-S. He's just out there walking around, being a public figure. His last picture. name is Cox. Ugh. Like that. Spelled like that. Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't trust him. I don't, I don't trust him either. But yeah, he probably loves it. He's like, yeah, it sounds like crisscross. And you're like, oh, that's <laughs> not what I it. think of. The guy's not in on the joke. At, he's yeah. never been in on any joke in his fucking life. That's why he sucks. That's why his name's Chris Cox. PlayStation has just unveiled Project Leonardo, a highly customizable accessibility controller kit. This is the coolest shit that PlayStation has done the fact that we've talked about this a lot is that they have the edge, the clear edge in controller technology. They do. They just focus. They put more emphasis on the controllers and they make them cool. And so they've taken that energy beam and they've changed its focus to accessibility for just a moment and created what is the coolest freaking controller kit I have ever seen. It is so modular. If you look at it, it looks like it's straight out of um, <laughs> that Ender's Game movie. Yeah, it, it just looks like so futuristic. It's a circular controller where you can imagine you could play it with any sort of appendage. Uh, you could you I mean, I think you could play this with your feet. This would allow you yeah. and I to I wouldn't say easily, but if you are used to using your feet <laughs> primarily like right. To manipulate stuff, you could absolutely play a PlayStation game with this controller with your feet, and you could teach yourself to do it very simply. Essentially, you don't need to be using thumbs at all to use this. No, you don't need to use your traditional hand setup. You could do this with your with your with your nose or anything like there's such a crazy modular aspect to this to where you can change and swap out where buttons and controllers and things are. It has the ability to where you can play this with someone. So, oh, well, I want to play. Uh, a game, but I can only control like the the button to shoot or something. But like someone can sit there next to me on the couch and they can control everything else. So I can just control that one button and they can sync and talk like that. The amount of customization that this allows for people to play and the amount of accessibility it opens up, they already uh, it will already work with a number of third part- party accessibility accessories. So they're already they're not like trying to reinvent the wheel necessarily like, oh, we just know everything about this. They're coming into the community, you know, hat in hand, you know, building off of what they've already done. Yeah. Yeah. I I just think it's the coolest thing ever. I just think. Oh, well, it's cool that it's it's actually PlayStation branded, too, Mm because I mean, I think stuff exists. Right. But it's always like third party. But this is this is PlayStation taking it to another level. This looks great. I mean, we joke about Peterson's hands, <laughs> but and he's got, you know, a little bit smaller hands and he can't touch his pinkies to his thumbs. But you twi- you you take that a little bit farther in one direction and like you might not be able to c- properly manipulate a normal controller. And so you're what on the hunt for like a Mad Cats controller or something that fits your hands or whatever. And then you what just give up. That I think there's a lot of people out there that don't have the you know exact hands that these controllers are designed for, and opening up games to them is just really really cool. So I'm yeah. really stoked about this. The Saudis have increased their ownership of Nintendo to six percent. That's not a that's not a small. I mean it's small percent, but six percent. 
of yeah. Nintendo. They were at is, five. Uh, we already reported on that. Now they're yep. at six. Um, Nintendo shares dropped 1.8% <laughs> on the news. I don't know if it's related, honestly, but probably. Uh, I feel like this. I, not, I feel. Uh, isn't that a trend? Didn't that happen with someone else earlier? The Saudis bought in, and mm-hmm. the price dropped. Yeah, that was in. Uh, I think that was actually in Nintendo's report that I was reading, like their investor report, and they acknowledged the potential impact. Or was it Ubisoft? I can't. It was someone else. They're like someone. This could actually hurt us. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Was, was it Embracer? Oh, it was Embracer. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Embracer called that out. They're like, yeah, this could hit our stock price, and it looks like it did. I think what's interesting to me is I have this new lens on this, and you can tell me what you think about it, is that I was initially, I think we were looking at it like, oh, no, the big bad Saudis are trying to, like, exert their will on all these companies. And I think that's a China thing with the Saudis, with with this investment fund. I think they're just looking at safe way, safe places to park their oil money. So when that runs out, they just have like really, I mean, who wouldn't want to own, what family wouldn't want to own 6% of fucking Nintendo? What a safe investment. I mean, nothing is more blue chip than guys that have enough cash on hand to run in the black for, or run in the red for 50 years straight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean. Yeah. I don't uh know. I, I think you're probably right. I, I think maybe just the worry is that if they never did try to influence anything, that it would not be something you would want them to influence, right? Totally. CD Projekt Red is set to pay out a whopping $1.85 million to investors mad about the botched launch of Cyberpunk 2077. $1.85 million. Oh, boy. Oh, are they going to be okay? Oh, I hope they survive, man. I hope they make it. Dude, that's not even that's not even their like uh, weekly uh, payroll payroll. Yeah. No expenses. Not this even is nothing. Not even close. This is also interesting because it quote uh, this agreement quote relinquishes any claims against the company and members of its management board. So they're I mean, they must have had a shit case. These investors that said that they were screwed must have had a pretty shitty case. If They're like, yeah, we'll settle for like, just leave it like just drop it. We've moved on. The investors had moved on. We're over so it. Their lawyers, they were just done with it, and so the lawyers were. They like, probably, whatever. honestly, this is lawyer legal fees. This is probably the total amount of the investors' legal fees, and this is just wasting everyone's time in the legal system just to extract a little bit of blood. And yeah, lawyers, are, mad. lawyers are half fine with it. Lawyers don't care. They're like, yeah, that's what we do. We extract blood. Yeah. <laughs> New rules from YouTube about swearing have sent YouTube gaming streamers into a profanity-laden tailspin. Okay, I gotta hear what this one's Oh, shit! (laughs) I hope that works. I hope that that was picked up on my mic. Dude, I knew what you were doing. You got it. Peterson could see me moving my head on the camera. You guys couldn't. Uh, All right, so this is rules that dropped on YouTube in November. But they are starting to have an outsized impact uh, starting last month. And now it's just like (laughs) everyone's like, what the fuck? Or more like, what the fork? You can't say the F word anymore because YouTube now treats all profanity equally. Wow. So ass and fart and fuck all the same. Um, And if you use these this profanity in titles, thumbnails or the first seven seconds of a video, your video could be completely demonetized. Wow. So. I mean, I feel like I do a pretty good job of keeping the F word down for the first seven seconds of our podcast, which is automatically posted on YouTube. But maybe uh, I should go back and just drop the F bomb right at the start of every video. So YouTube can't monetize any of them. That would be kind of funny. And then you guys slap ads on our fucking podcast, you motherfuckers. No way, ass butts. Actually, I don't even need to say the F word. I say ass butt. (laughs) Please say that at the beginning of every. I mean, we're at, like Peterson could get in on this. It'd Peterson to, could get us get banned in, for Peterson level swears. It'd have to get in at the at the very th- thing I put at the very beginning. Three, yeah, this just podcasts or ass, know, ass, whatever. ass, 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 ass. 
Yeah, I think you could do it. So also, if you swear consistently through the video, you're re- at risk of demonetization. Oh, man. So I guess they're on PG-13 rules where you have like a couple F-bombs, but it's pretty nebulous about what's actually allowed. It's yeah. just like some people sitting in a movie theater arbitrarily making these decisions based on their puritanical values. Um, So this is also pretty cool because it applies retroactively. No way. Which means that a lot of older popular videos are also being demonetized so and then the best part is so you're like oh fine sorry youtube i'll go through use your platform editing tools to add seven seconds of non-ass words and then can i re-monetize this old video that i made five years ago that has 12 million views and they're like nope no re-monetization ever wow so i've really I feel like I didn't plan for this. I'm I'm not really prepared, but I'm going to give it my best shot because I'm, I'm getting pretty. I feel like there's a conspiracy brewing. Doesn't this feel like a conspiracy? Always. Doesn't it feel like YouTube's getting up to some more funky shit, folks? These little weasels, these little rats. This is what they do. They go to their little data monkeys and they say, hey, folks, hey, data rats, can you go find me a list of everyone's videos that we're paying out a ton of money on and then find out how many of those videos that we spend money on have swearing? And then once you find out how many swearing videos we could demonetize, how much money we would have to stop sharing with our streamer platform. Wouldn't that be great? And so the little data guys go through and they say, hey, here's all these videos and all these gamers that are good, honest, Christian, white, American gamer videos. And they're out there, but they say an F word here or there. And so you could just completely demonetize their whole stream. And then YouTube doesn't have to spend any money on these these streamers anymore. That's what I'm telling you, folks. YouTube's stealing from the people. I feel like I'm getting better at this and it's alarming me. I I feel like you like it. That's the scary part. (laughs) It's like, uh, it's starting to become part of me. Is this how he started? It was like a fucking bit. Yeah. And then now it's like, now it's so it happens like, when you forget to turn off a bit. And just, your character just follows you out of the studio. It's horrifying. <laughs> I don't want to be JD after I left this place. <laughs> what a nightmare. <laughs> Live this guy's life. Get ready for mobile gaming to get even worse because Apple has just added 700 more pricing tiers to the app store. That can't be right. <laughs> that number's too big. <laughs> These are just different like categories where you can price your app that it's like, oh, this is in the two fifty to fourteen ninety nine category, or this is in the fourteen dollars to sixteen dollars category. Wow. It was just a funny headline. We can With move on. Seven hundred additional price points. That's just <laughs> people Why? want options. People want choice of how much money they're spending yeah that's wild on their phone hasbro owned wizards of the coast has canceled five video game projects uh i don't even know where this this i put on the dock earlier this week and then the other one was later i know i I thought you were being cheeky when you said hasbro owned wizard of the coast no man yeah it's just bad it's a bad week in news for hasbro and wizards of the coast they've canceled at least five video game projects. Um, you guys are sitting there like, fucking what? Wizards of the Coast was making video games? Yeah, apparently. Not anymore, though. They uh, The only one that I could really find that they made was Dark Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. That came out last year. Or, fuck, 2021, which is no longer last year. It was pretty panned across the board. People weren't into it they haven't done a great job at these for a while i played a D game i'm trying to remember what it was called and it wasn't Baldur's gate like those ones yeah um, they're sticking with that obviously I, mean, I played a different one it was gosh now it's gonna bug me i'll have to look it up what but uh but yeah it's a they've been really i wouldn't even say hit or miss they've been really miss miss or miss for a while and so it makes sense that they would be canceling these. It makes less sense why they even started this in the first place. And this is kind of, I mean, you guys have already pieced this together, but I'll say it. It's like a one-two punch between their like, hey, 
this other place where we were branching off and spending a bunch of money, we're cutting it off. So we'll never see any of that money come to fruition, the investment we made in making these games. And on the other side, the stuff that actually is working, the D&D side of the house, we're going to punch them in the nuts, too, because we just, for some reason, are going to come after our community for the potential to make a little bit extra dough. Ah, I wouldn't want to be working at Wizards of the Coast. I would not want to be working on D&D for the next couple of months, is all I'm saying, because yeah, I don't imagine the uh, atmosphere in the office is super bright. Yeah, right people now. are super stoked. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I remembered what game it was called that I played. Hmm. I played Neverwinter Nights. Oh, that sounds familiar to me. From like like early to like 2002 or something like that. I don't uh, even know if that's in the same category as this like batch of what they've been doing. This no. is like a whole new like part of the business they spun off to make just pump out D&D games. I just don't know why you can't see someone building off of your platform and just be happy for be them. Be like, oh, nice. Oh, man, look at Critical Role is such a cool thing. That's like our game. I Oof. hope it brings more people in to buy our book off the shelf and, and teach themselves Dungeons and Dragons. But it's like, nah, how can we make money off of this? Oh, people like Critical Role? All right, let's get in on that. How? Why am I not getting paid 25%, for that? 25%. 25% handed Listen, over. Listen, Chris Cox, you haven't done shit in your life. But just sit in a chair and be you, Chris Cox. Not paying you for that. After canceling seven games in the past six months, Ubisoft finally admits they're in a billion dollar slump. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and if you guys didn't know, duh, 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 Skull and Bones has been delayed a sixth time. Oh my gosh. This game has is now been uh. delayed across. Uh, well, like five years or something. It's wild. Oh, it's like 10 at this point. I think it was announced because let's see. Uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It was announced on the heels of that game, which released in 2013. So, yeah, we're looking at 10 years now. We are officially in Duke Nukem Forever territory on this nice. one. Um, and like Duke, Duke Nukem Forever, this is a game that seems for some reason or another, like it will eventually come out. Come hell or high water. If it's the last video game that's ever released on planet Earth, this will come out. Come uh, we don't know why, but it has to come out. So it's been delayed again, though, probably next year. And then they released a video of more gameplay. They're like, hey, no, sorry. Here's a 30 minute video of gameplay. And everyone's like, that's shit. I don't want that. <laughs> I cannot I imagine how that by this point. Fucking discouraging it must be to work on that game at this point. You were working. And I don't think Ubisoft Singapore is probably like the most like pleasant place to work. Like it's like an uplifting office where you go in and work an eight hour day and you're like rewarded for the work you do. Oh, uh, I bet it, it just feels like it's just a, a grindhouse sweatshop and nothing's ever coming out. And then when you do finally pump something out because uh, you know, the, the boss is like, damn it, we need something if you're going to delay it for a year. You're like, okay, here's a 30-minute video we put together. And everyone's like, boo! What do you fucking do with that? What do you, where do you go from there? So this is not just Ubisoft Singapore, though. However, <laughs> if you guys remember that four, Ubisoft canceled four, four unannounced games in July, July of last year. They are canceling three more wow. unannounced games now, this month, January of 2023. They're just canceling games they haven't even fucking talked about yet. It's that is to, bleak. I feel like it's hard to make money on video games if you don't publish video games, you know? Dude, that's an interesting thought. I like that. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, a billion dollars. You should write that down. <laughs> I'll send it to them in a, in a tweet. I think they might appreciate that information. Hey, as a video game publisher, uh, just some free professional advice. I think you can make money by publishing a game every now and then. Dude, you joke, but did you know? Did you know that Ubisoft has not released an Assassin's Creed, 
Creed game since 2020 with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the Vikings one. Did you know that? I had no idea until I started looking into this. Assassin's Creed, which usually has one game a year and has for like 10 plus years. They haven't had a game in three years now. And I don't even know what the next one's supposed to fucking be. Is there one? I, I feel like we heard something. Maybe. Wonder if it's in like China. It's like the only place we haven't gone yet, I don't think. I think that's what it was. I think India, it was something Ooh, like that. That'd be tight. Um, so yeah, they're they're projecting the company is projecting a roughly five hundred and thirty-seven million dollar loss Oof. for the fiscal year ending March twenty twenty three. Well, so let's Rough. see. In March, just should we put it on the episode notes now that we'll just be uh talking about some Ubisoft layoffs? Yeah. Come brutal March. layoffs. I think they will be starting now and 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 carrying on into March because they're well aware of this problem. Yeah. They were projecting 10% growth for this uh year, this upcoming year starting in March 2023. They were they, projecting 10% they missed growth. Their projections. Just a little bit by 20% because they're now projecting 10% decline. Wow. In net net bookings which is game sales dlc purchases other transactions there's any money that's coming in from their digital storefronts wow. uh so that's going to go down 10 percent. so the staffs will probably go down more than that uh this just is one more of my favorite example of what we keep seeing and we will keep seeing as more financial years close is people that based all their projections for the future off of all the fuck ton of money they were making during the pandemic Death and they're true. like, what? Netflix did the same fucking thing. All these other tech companies did the same fucking thing. That's and then once it adjusted, they're like, whoa, we have to lay off all these people. What? Things don't grow forever. The pandemic stopped. Things are different now than they were three months ago. Huh. Capitalism's hard. <laughs> it is. It is, you guys. Hard, let's guys. just let's just give it up. Try, try something different. This one's too hard. The creator of EverQuest has stepped down from Amazon Game Studios after six years and zero released games. Well, job, originally, a job well done. <laughs> a job well. Yeah. Uh, originally, I was coming here to roast this guy. I thought this would be fun. It's a fun, fun headline. No, I'm here to empathize with this guy. Our friend John Smedley, who ran the uh, Amazon Game Studio in San Diego. Amazon Game Studios San Diego. That's the name they go with. It's not very sexy. AGS nope. San Diego. Nope. Doesn't even sound good on a resume. So he was there for six years. No games published. Uh, he, like I mentioned, he was the, like one of the creators of EverQuest. He did a ton of work on Sony online entertainment when he went there. Like this guy is not a nobody and he's had a really important career in video games for like 20 plus years, or I'm sorry, like 30, 40 plus years. And Amazon is where your gaming career goes to die. Is is he going anywhere else, or is he just I, I don't? He's just, he's just out. He does. He just needs a fucking break. Needs a breather because Amazon just does that, dude. Imagine just like going in six years, six years, and you're like, I wouldn't say he's at the pinnacle or peak of his career, but he's definitely somebody who has a wealth of experience and who you should have. He's a resource they should have used. And big instead, role at a big company, uh huh. Zero impact. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it, almost anyone would leave. I, I, I mean, you you see these things and you just kind of like shrug them off. And I think it's because it's video games are especially the digital only games that it's like of 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 these days. It's hard to to conceptualize like the work that has to go in to make them. But I also I think about you, Peterson, working at Boeing. And I think if you hired a guy who was like an ace airplane designer to come build a brand new airplane and he worked on it. Now, let's talk in airplane years, he worked on it for like 20 years on this thing. And then he just left and Boeing paid him for two decades and there was like nothing and they had no plane and they weren't. And you're like, well, nothing, no plane will ever come out of that department that he ran and Forever. had all his experience yeah. just bottled up there. And now there's nothing. There's no plane. Yep. Ah, oh, such a fucking waste, man. Yeah, it's just wasted talent, wasted time. 
it's a waste of your money. It's a waste of his money. It's a waste of his time and talent. Yeah, it's like, uh, I just think this is crazy. Um, so as a warning if uh, to the many, many game developers that listen to this podcast, don't go work to AGS. Go work at AGS. You're not going to change things. Even if you are at the absolute top of one of their of one of their studio houses, you will not get anything published. And if you do, they'll probably pull it pull it after a month. Then it never happened. Yeah, it seems like Amazon Game Studios would be like you know Amazon, like it's a recognizable brand on your resume. Nope. This is worse because they, you know, next interview they're like, "Hey, what do you? What did you work on? What have you done?" Show us your portfolio. Like, uh here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing, dude. What a great point. What a what a fantastic point because I'm just talking about John Smedley here. I'm not even thinking about all the probably hundreds of people that work in this office that are, are animators and artists and riggers and all these other people that that have jobs that they can't show any portfolio work for. Yep, that's crazy. <sighs> A bunch of senior leadership from the Forza Horizon team has formed their own indie studio. Oh, here we go. They love doing this. this. Dude, I like this. Um, this is a huge long article that I yes, it is. read. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so in depth, but I will give you the skinny. This is they are going by Maverick Games, um, which I think is funny because I always just think of Tina Fey playing Sarah Palin on SNL saying Maverick. Oh, nice. That word has been ruined for me. Maverick. Uh, and Maverick Games is located in uh, this is fucking weird. Royal Leamington Spa, commonly known as Leamington Spa or simply Leamington, a spa town and civil parish in Warwickshire, England. Does all of England sound like fucking Lord of the Rings? Like everywhere yeah, you live, it does. Every town could be straight out of Lord. So it's not really fantasy. It's just like you just looked out the street. J.R. Tolkien just like looked out at the street signs and he's like, oh, oh yeah, Gandalf Warkshire. Boulevard. That's what I'll call the wizard Gandalf. Easy place <laughs> to come up with fantasy names because it he all just, sounds like nonsense. Just, just, just hope it's a phone book. That's where you guys think this is fantasy and he invented this language. No, that's just Welsh. Gimli. <laughs> that was his that was his next door neighbor. He actually hated it. Just, just a guy. Just a guy named <laughs> Bilbo. Bilbo was his housekeeper. Uh, so, yeah, this is Maverick Games are located. I think we knew this, that Forza was um, yeah, they were they were some small town in England that they were working in. Um, So, yeah, this is let's see. They they the company has been backed by a London based investor. They have the funds. Uh, they quote the founders say they have the funds they need, whatever that means. They got so a bunch of cash. Got a bunch of cash um, and the studio is not ready to talk about the game they're making, but it isn't necessarily a driving game. Despite their background, it is a one, an open world two, a triple A and three, a premium game. Okay. That is all we know for now. Okay, 60, 70 bucks. That's what we know is coming out of uh, Maverick games. Yeah, we know what Maverick's charging for this game. That's what we've got. It looks like Microsoft won't have to wait to finalize their Activision acquisition as they've already picked up their first union. Here Way to go, go, guys. Fulfilling the, the Peterson prophecy. It's coming. Dude, I'm so proud of you. I feel like I, if we had an intern, this is what I would have them do. I'd have them go through all our old episodes. And find <laughs> every time you said, you're asking for a union, make a super cut. We'd package that and we would send that clip uh, like a gold, we would like a, a, a gold plated vinyl, yeah. and we would send that to all these studios. Every time you get a new fucking union, we send you the Peterson prophecy supercut. Yeah, yeah gold plated vinyl. I think that's a great idea. Uh, <laughs> I definitely will have to be an intern because I don't want to go back and listen to all of it. <laughs> no, it has to be an but, intern. Uh... So if you guys are interested in an internship with the Three Big Gamer Show, you know what you're getting into. You just have to listen to a lot of episodes and clip some stuff out. Look, how hard could that be? It's only 300 episodes. Exactly. It's only 300 episodes times like average 70 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, the first few were not as long. So, yeah. So it's like a little bit. What is that? 300 times 70 minutes 
is like 2100 21,000 minutes that's not that bad yeah dude we're not going to pay you so you know it's only 350 hours dude that's Are you just me? the listening dude, yeah three for the like, privilege of you should be paying us, us. 350 hours <laughs> this is only 14 days of listening to the podcast straight <laughs> dude that's a that's a simple binge that's a quick netflix um anyway yes yeah, so obviously microsoft will have a union even if this activision acquisition doesn't go through because 300 i mean Check that 300 video game testers that are working for uh, ZeniMax Studios. These are the guys that own uh, Bethesda. They voted to form what will be the software giant's first union and the largest, obviously, in the Mm -hmm. video game industry. This will be the giant super union that I think a lot look to as a sign of stability. Um. I mean, they'll be testing the next Skyrim game. They're testing. I I would imagine these are the guys that are working on Starfield. So, so next time they try to bully the testers out, uh, there's good. They're gonna. It, it's like they have a gang now. That's how yeah. I picture it. Yeah. Someone's like, That's... "Hey, you're just a tester," <laughs> and then like four other dudes walk up behind him with their arms folded, and. Uh, you're like, oh, n- never mind, sir. Go on in. That's what's happening. That's what I feel like is happening. Yeah, and I, I'm sto- I'm stoked for them. Uh, Microsoft formally recognized the union, even though I always like the uh, my union education came in the form of Disney's uh, hit 1992 mm-hmm. musical Newsies. Yeah, it's a little different now, but. But Uh, there is a line from that where they say, uh, we're a union just by saying so. So I'm like, yeah, it's nice that uh, Microsoft recognized it, but hmm. I think they were a union all along. You always had it in your heart. (laughs) I mean, there are some legal uh, ramifications to not recognizing it as well. You didn't need that special potion. You had it inside you all along, Dumbo. There was nothing in the potion. (laughs) It was just water. It, it was you. It was a union. Mm-hmm. You go beat the shit out of your stupid bosses who are trying to exploit you. I think this is going to be great. I cannot wait to see uh, what this does. If you guys, I always like to remind myself that the video game testers have long been shown, long been treated as disposable because it is an entry level job in the gaming industry. That's how a lot of people yeah. can't come in and get their foot in the door. Well, now getting your foot in the door won't be some miserable test of how much you can suffer and how much you can put up with. What does that do to the gaming industry, dude? How does that uh, affect this talent pool, which is what QA is? I know it shouldn't be in the gaming industry, but it is. Uh, How does that affect the overall gaming industry? If instead of having everyone come in and feel like they get hazed, kicked in the teeth and have beer spilled on them they come in and it's like they've got like peterson said they got bullies looking out for them and there is no hazing yeah that's the kind of stuff happens now and the company's gonna get uh dinged for it right that's some yeah fraction and then the company gets dinged and i mean what i've been saying all along is also like this is i think we're seeing a union resurgence in across the country this is a way that you are going to see te- tech jobs outside of the video game industry also unionize. Yeah, I think this is I mean, we're, we're, I mean, this is a years, years long process, but it starts here in this massive industry and moves uh, outside of of, te- of video game companies and other tech mm-hmm. companies. And next thing, I think unions, we are in a yeah resurgence of unions because companies have had it good too long and they took advantage of that. So, here yeah, we go. they, here they we had go. it good and it wasn't good enough for them. No. Oh, well, and they just not. had to keep fucking pushing. You got to push. Well, you pushed too damn hard. Yep. China has purchased a super magical stock. In Tencent. Oh, is that like a golden ticket or how does yeah. that? What is that? It's so cool, dude. This is check this out. So if you're China and you have like companies in China, 
you can be like, all right, so this is how it's going to work. We will buy 1% of your company and we just get to do something. You get it? So just like 1% and like you give us something. So like we buy like 1% and you like give us a director's position and we get to choose a director. We just get to place him. And, you know, he makes all the decisions for your company. 1%. That's a good deal. You should take it. Reminds me of that, uh, that character in the office is his business idea is like, I think just take like, like a 0.1% of uh, every transaction that happens. Just like every transaction you run, I get like 0.1%. <laughs> like for what? He's like, I just get it. And that's just the rules. And that's just how things work. This is so funny to me. This is a uh, a 1% holding in a key segment. They're known as, quote, special management shares that wow. give Beijing rights over special decisions at companies. They're doing this to Tencent. They're also doing this to Alibaba and uh, TikTok owner ByteDance. Uh, just 1%. And then we just we just get it. We just get whatever we want. 1%. It's fine. It's a deal. Look, you we like get it. a guy at the table. One for one percent. I don't know about that. That seems this seems like a it seems like a threat or something like that. Is this like a mafia shakedown? Dude, it is exactly like that. And <laughs> it, it's like a mob it's like a mob run economy. Um <laughs> dude, this is crazy. Anytime that any of these companies get too big, because that was it, is like the the Communist Party wanted to get rich, they let a little, little bit of capitalism in and it got out of control and they're like whoa we're gonna rein that shit back in look how much power this money gives these people can't let we'll, that happen. we'll, we'll spend fake money to get real power so one percent uh <laughs> so if you guys remember this all just plays into the larger uh storyline here with tencent that was recently allowed to sell video games once more in china um big deal and uh now they now that now we're seeing what cost was extracted for that. And that's Jeez. this. I wonder if that guy who sits at the table, if he's reporting anything back to uh, Daddy Xinping. I'm sure. No. He, nah. Nah. He's probably just there to make a critical decisions. No, I'm sure he is. I, yeah, helpful. I'm sure he's a really smart, uh, talented business leader. And he was placed there entirely on his business acumen alone. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, he sure yeah. does take a lot of notes. This is weird. wow. He doesn't say much, does he? No. But man, he does take a lot of pictures. <laughs> of everything. What do, think, what do you think he's doing with those? I think he should stop asking questions. Yeah. Got, well, you're go, you're out a window. Next thing you <laughs> yeah, know. Two questions is all you get in China and you're fucking out of the <laughs> off to the camp, dude. <laughs> Kudos. 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 All right, kudos is our positivity segment. We'd like to give a shout out to something we are digging. Uh, I'll go first because Peterson's is in the kudos. Uh, I don't know if you guys are in Utah. If you are in Utah, you know when I say a pastrami burger, what that means. Yeah, you need one. Um, as a Utah, you legally have to eat at least one pastrami burger a year. Or you get exiled. Sometimes the mood is just right, and you're like, I want oh. something. I want a greasy burger, but mm -hmm. I don't want just a greasy burger. I want something extra on it. And when that mood strikes, these things hit the spot. I want a greasy burger that I saw on diners, drive-ins, and dives, essentially. Like yeah. something so yeah. asinine. Yeah. You guys aren't from Utah. This burger is uh, particularly popular within our local Greek community for some reason. I don't get it, but I love it. They take a charbroiled burger, slap cheese on it, and then they will take uh, this pastrami that has been marinating uh, in a brine for at least 24 hours. So it is just salty as all fucking hell. Yeah, like you got to be in the mood sliced. for this burger, guys. Yeah, and they will take that and they'll slap that on top of it, pile it high with lettuce, pickle, or lettuce, no pickle, lettuce, onion, tomato, and then if you're eating it right, you are pouring uh, over every single bite. You are pouring fry sauce, which is a mayo mustard or I'm sorry, a mayo, mayo ketchup, ketchup combo. You're pouring that on every single bite as you bite through this. That's, thing. A, it is, that's a true Utah right there. Yeah, it it's something that and, and you're in a coma. I went to bed at fucking 830. <laughs> like I was it, man. Yeah, it, like Chris, Thanksgiving dinner can take a seat. Because the pastrami burger is where it's at. So 
long story short, as you guys can tell, like Peterson said, I just the weather was right for one of these and um, didn't want to drive. It was kind of rainy. And I was like, Mah. so we looked at DoorDash, which I've been trying to use less. And I thought, you know, a greasy pastrami laden burger, cheeseburger in a car. Is that going to get to my place? I just wanted it so damn bad. Yeah. So I got on DoorDash and I ordered an Astro burger. And you guys, it showed up like I just got it in the it, like I just got it in the restaurant. Beautiful. It came. The DoorDash driver must have been in a Tesla with his foot to the fucking floor the whole way there because this thing was just like hot. It was like steaming. I took a bite and it was like oh, it was like steaming hot. Wow. The fries were too hot to eat. That never happens. I never happens. So I'm giving my kudos to Astro Burger and DoorDash. I feel like these service workers from both of these services came together um, and just it was just like the the planets aligned to give me the but it was this is the best pastrami burger experience I've had in years. Oh, wow. Just slapped. Just was so this good. This is like what DoorDash of old used to be like. Yeah. Uh, come fast and come hot. And yeah. it wasn't like super expensive. And yeah, this wasn't super pricey. Uh, yeah, it was who nice. Just way to go, you guys. Good teamwork. Uh, well, mine is a, just a very quick Pudos. I thought this was pretty funny, but also weirdly bad programming. So if you remembered a while back, I was playing a game called Disney Dreamlight Valley. Uh, it's a Disney based. Uh, what's Stardew Valley type of game? Um, you know, cutesy, pretty fun. Well done. Um, you were playing this with your daughter, right? Yeah. So me and Lily would play this together. Well, this week I've been uh, very sick uh, and you might be able to hear it a little bit. But COVID? Yeah. <laughs> I've had COVID and I've been down for days. But uh, so but Lily decided she wanted to get back into Disney Dream Life Valley. So I I booted up for her. Um, and she does hand her the control and she just runs around and picks stuff up and talks to people. Yeah. She just loves it. She likes seeing all the Disney characters or whatever. Um, she did this a few times. And then one day she's like, dad, can I play Disney dream my Valley?" And I'm like, sure. And I was like, you know how to start it. Right. Cause I'd kind of showed her. Cause I was like, I can't go downstairs all the time. Like I was really feeling sick. So she's like, yeah, she comes down, starts it. Um, all you have to do is hit a, well, there's some bad design in there and I had kind of forgotten about it, but she hits new game. Mm -hmm. Dude, it doesn't make a new game file. It completely resets your game. So we've been playing no. this game and unlocked everything, no. right? Completely you, starts over. No so I way. look it up and I'm like, okay, well there's gotta be a way to revert. No, this problem has existed since launch. And they haven't fixed it. So many people, there's like all these YouTube videos. Of people like, dude, I accidentally hit new game instead what of continue. And it just, it just resets everything. And, what uh, year is this? That's like a 90s thing. Yeah, this a is a single save with a no guardrails up for it for dude, you to delete your file. And it's like an Xbox Game Pass game. And so, like, fuck? you naturally, you should have uh multiple save files uh dude so everyone can play so what happened did lily was she was she just heartbroken or so did she notice? sad no she noticed uh. she was so sad i had to end up hobbling downstairs and come looking and checking <laughs> it at, and you and have I to deal like, with this sick as a dog yes and i'm like it's gone and she was i mean she's a sweet girl so she was like i'm sorry dad and i was like well, i don't care i was like you can <laughs> I was like, you can start oh, over if you want heart. and just play it again. You can start over. And she's like, I'm just going to quit. And so she's done with Disney Dreamlight Valley. The only video game she plays because wow. of this weird, terrible design. So they definitely oh. get a Pudos from me because that is dude unforgivable. Put, that, put, a, put a Blursy nom for worst feature on that. Oh, that's Slap that, that on the dock, dude. That is an early blursy worst feature. That is terrible. Yep. Isn't that so Fuck. bad? I don't like that at all. Uh, speaking of the blursies, good transition, uh, JD. Thanks, man. Well done. We haven't worked on transitions in years. 
I know. We suck at it. We that's why we started doing bumpers. We just stopped caring about it. it yeah, like, we started doing bumpers we... so I could just pause awkwardly. <laughs> uh so guys, the Blur C voting is still live. A lot of you have already voted, so thank you so much for that. If you want to vote, go to 3bitgamershow.com slash blurcies or go check out on Discord. I will be sharing the link again this week a couple times. Uh, it's also on Twitter. I think it's pinned to our Twitter, I guess you call it your Twitter. And Peterson your tweeter. Probably posted on it's Facebook. your Twitter. Uh, it's posted on our Twitter, pinned to our Twitter. Um, <laughs> we want your votes. We want your uh, your data, which is your votes. So go vote for the Blursties. Do it. And in the meantime, we got some predictions. Peterson's already hot with the prophecies. Oh, gosh. Um, and I I have been J.D. Nostradamus recently. Well, I was out there ranting about the Delta Center in an unrelated rant. And then what happens? It they did fucking happen. rename it the, de- the damn Delta Center, didn't they? That is true. Like a fucking three days later. So... I got my JD Nostradamus cap on the wizard cap thing. I guess that's you, what he would wear. He didn't wear a wizard's cap. He was just a Nostra- normal was guy. Was Nostradamus JD. a real guy? Yeah. Was he, he like? He wasn't. Was a he real like Robin wizard. Hood? He nope. Nah, he was like a real guy. Yeah, and like he had a hat, just a normal like, hat. Yeah. So I have a normal hat on. There you go. Okay. And Peterson has been dropping prophecies for the last five years. He's he's got the long term prophecies. Yeah. So we're gonna take that those energy beams and we're gonna direct them at the next twelve months. We're gonna predict what's gonna happen next this year, this upcoming year in video games. Uh. I'll just I'll just start. Just kick it off. Just keep get going. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about games that are going to flop. Okay, and this is there's not a ton of big games coming out next year. There's like a couple. There's a, there's like some a, big ones. Diablo Four, Hogwarts Legacy, um, Alan Wake Two, Starfield. Those are the big ones. Starfield, Diablo Four, and oh, and Spider Man Two, and Hogwarts. Uh, Spider Man Two, and then. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy. So those are like the four big ones. Are they any? That's it, though. This is a weird year, right? I mean, a lot of stuff was yeah was pushed off to this year, but like because like nothing was released last year. It felt like yeah, it's but big ones that were going to come out last year. I these are some yeah, these are some pretty big, pretty big games, pretty anticipated games. So I don't think that Hogwarts Legacy is going to necessarily flop. Uh, I will say I am a little worried about Alan Wake Two. Living up to the hype, having that last game, first game came out in like 2010 or something. Yeah. Uh, maybe it'll be good. But you know what I will say? Hmm. I don't think Diablo 4 is going to be what people want. I'm not going to say it's going to flop. It's going to make a million fucking dollars. It's going to make so much money. But I don't think it's going to be the game that people have been waiting and champing at the bit for since Diablo 3 came out in 2012. Um, I think 10 years, I mean, a safe prediction is that the gameplay will be sound. It will be fun. Yeah. It will be sound. It will be what you want, but yep. there will be some stupid little fringe features yep. that will have all these unintended consequences, just like every other Diablo release since Diablo two. Right. Yeah. They just add something that affects the game in a way that they weren't anticipating and they have to go back and change it. And something that no one was asking for. That always seems to be the theme. Right, right. Diablo 3, honestly, by the time I played it, was, was a good game. They had added all the stuff that people wanted. But as I understand, the release was not exactly what everyone was looking for. It's a very different game now than it was at release. And that's what we're going to see. Um uh, hopefully they make good decisions, like like, like they learned some lessons from D three. But yeah, it, it's Activision Blizzard at this point. Like we wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. Uh I want to hear your take on this one, Peterson. What games are going to get delayed? Uh, I named those four big ones, but there's a couple other ones that are 
coming out as well. Oh, and the new Zelda game. Oh, someone is shouting at me, has been shouting at me this whole time. Uh, the new Zelda game. That's the big one. Yeah, so, yeah. sorry. Uh, I think Zelda, Phil passed Spider-Man out from 2. yelling. Yeah, someone must have been just screeching at me that whole fucking time. Uh, Starfield, Hogwarts Legacy. Um, um, I don't think Alan Wake 2 is on anyone's radar. Honestly, that's not like so a AAA. My, one of my predictions is that this honestly isn't that floppy of a year. Yeah, I think the banger, games right? that are coming out are going to be pretty good. I think some of the ones that we weren't yeah. super excited for will be flops, like Redfall. Uh, I remember seeing that and thinking that game looks really cool, but I think it's going to come out and be a bummer. Uh, other games that like we're not watching, but someone definitely is, Minecraft Legends. I think that's going to come out, and it's going to be a huge boner. It's going to suck. So... <laughs> Um, let's see. Delay. What did you, what was the question? What did you, uh, move do, on you to? Think, Delays. do you think is, there's a chance that we'll see? I think the only one we might see delayed is Starfield. I, put I would Starfield put 50-50. 100%. I put, oh, you 100%. put a hundred percent. It's getting delayed. I don't know if it'll yeah. get delayed until a lot 2024. But yeah. But it's getting delayed. Cause well, I, isn't it supposed to come out in November. I, I think, I mean, what it says right now, when I looked it up was, First half of 2023. I feel like that's never a good oh, sign. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah, there's no way. Th- there's th- no way that's coming out in the next five months. I feel like they would have a date down if it was coming out in the next five yeah. months. Oh, Already. They would have had to have that. So, so yeah. That's I why think. I put Starfield 100% yeah. November, on my notes. November. That, that one's coming out right before the Christmas season. Everyone's going to want that. Skyrim in space. See, that's what I think is going to happen with uh star wars jedi survivor oh yeah that one too so that one's coming out it's supposed to come out in march i think uh oh but that's i can see that coming out on time i feel like they're gonna realize it needs just a tiny bit of polish plus march isn't a great time to release a video game and they'll but are there any star wars shows or series or movies coming out because that back on well, they do that on purpose. Like it may not, they might not have a choice. They may be like, release it shitty and, and just bite the bullet for a month while you patch these things out. Like mm. they couple those things now with like the launches to keep like Star Wars in the in news. Your, yeah, in your face too. So. Yeah, they, they, so it may, That's they may not point. have a choice. That's a good but point. But I think I, that one might get I pushed back. Delayed. But I don't think it'll get delayed beyond 2023. If it gets oh. delayed, it'll just be a few months. No, and that that's a good point. I think any of these games that we've talked about so far, none of them I don't think would get delayed out out past this year. I have a prediction. I predict that Skull and Bones will get delayed <laughs> past that. <laughs> I did write this. I did write put this so together before that fucking announcement. I know you did. <laughs> that that one's so lame. They they took me out of the knees, man. Dude, that's that was unfair. easy. We could have had an easy, easy. prediction come through. And it would have been an instant prediction. Nostra JD, what do you call it? Nostradam Jadius. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. Uh, okay. So I think we already kind of know this one because they've already got one episode out and everyone loved it. The Last of Us TV show, I think is looking like it's going to be a hit. Okay. Yeah. Here's my prediction. Hmm. Episode one came out well received. I haven't watched it yet, but they said, oh, man, you're already seeing stuff like here's how here's how you stick to the games before this season is over. They will blow it. They will do something nearly unforgivable. That's my prediction. I love that fucking prediction, dude. That's my prediction. You think they will they will do it. They will have a cardinal sin. Yes. In. Yep. In the last us TV show, okay, like like T- T- Master Chief taking his helmet off, yeah, like something that bad. Or um, yeah, I love that dude. That's a great prediction. Okay, cool. Um, do you think the Saudis will buy another five percent in any other? My bet is that the Saudis will buy five percent of Zenimax. Oh, which can they? No, they can't. I don't because know. Microsoft owns all of them. So never mind. I take that back. Wait, I, is that a thing? Can you still is that still publicly traded? I don't know. I think the Saudis will buy if they haven't already. I didn't think they had. No. CD Project Red. They'll buy a bit of oh. CDPR 
Um, they should have bought the dip earlier. Well, last year we're gonna. We, that's not the last dip CDPR is gonna see. But the Saudis <laughs> are gonna buy in on that dip to dip because honestly, it's it's not a bad risk for a like a a country like Saudi Arabia who just they swim in money and uh, they got so much cash. It's not a bad bet because. There is a chance that CD Projekt Red will come out and just make a great game and will make a bazillion dollars on it, right? They have so get in now and just buy you know four or five percent or whatever, and you can just get in on that for pretty cheap. So I think not as safe as Nintendo. No, I mean come on, Nintendo's gonna make money. I I feel like they're just no matter what they do, they're gonna make money. Okay, there's two more things I want to talk about, and I don't know if there's anything else on your radar this year. Uh, the first thing is E3. Are we going to go to E3? It's the podcast packing up and going to L.A. No. L.A. Fucking L.A. Why, do you want to? Do you want to? I don't want to. I mean, to. I've been. Oh. Uh, no, I don't want to go to E3. Too many people, too many lines. Do you think they're going to breed a super strain of COVID at E3? If not COVID, then at least something. Some sort of super nerd flu. Yeah, okay, cool. like viruses love that. Do you think this E3 will uh, be the E3 that signals that everyone to everyone, oh, E3's back, we're doing this again. Or it's like, no, man, E3 is dead. They tried to bring it back, and now it's real dead. Okay, so I feel like studios should be at a point to make some great announcements, but they won't. Nobody will. Nobody has anything cooked long enough to okay. announce that we're not already like watching or ready for this year. And so, yeah, I feel like E3 this year is going to be r- slow and kind of a bust. I'm not excited okay. for it. I don't see cuz I mean, what what are we what are we looking excited for? What are we looking for in the future? I think it's Bethesda types of games. And dude, they're not even close. So, yeah. I don't think we're going to see uh, Elder Scrolls, anything we're not going to see. Oh, I mean, what else are we excited for? I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so the last thing here. I guess you're a huge lame wiener about this. Which one? You're not the person to talk to about this. The new Zelda game. Oh, I forgot you played that first one on the Switch for all of an hour. Dude, I played for you... like two hours, and then I was like, I don't like this. You didn't like it. Um, I think I am going to fall headfirst into the new Zelda game. I didn't play any of the... I feel like they had expansions and add-ons that built off of Breath of the Wild. Uh, I don't... I didn't touch any of them. I didn't explore any of them. I was like, eh. Now this You're is a, a whole... Purist. New game. Yeah. I dude, and this is gonna sound weird. I never played any of the Skyrim expansions, and I played the base game thousands of hours. Sometimes I just I'm just like, meh, I just like it. I like it vanilla. So uh, I'm really excited. I really and I think there's zero chance. There is a zero percent chance this game doesn't deliver everything I'm looking for. I yeah, I, I'm with you on this one. I feel like this game is going to be another Zelda banger. It's yeah. going to come out. It's going to be exactly what people want. Banger. It's scratch that itch. Banger. People are going to love Banger. it. Banger. That's yep. what this is. I don't think they dropped the ball on this one like they did with Pokemon. I think they really, because the Zelda Breath of the Wild, they put a lot of love into it. And I, I think they care about Zelda. I think, yeah, I think they're going to continue Pokemon to do is that. Just this disgusting cow. That's just obese and overweight, and they just milk it, and it's just it's like, yeah, let me die. And they're like, no, You're and like, we will no. not exercise you or try to make you healthy at all. Just keep making milk, you fatty. That's how they treat Pokemon. But yeah, no, Zelda's like this this amazingly well groomed purebred horse that they take out once every five years and let you look at. It's real yeah. nice. Yeah, I think this so game's like going to be very good. Do you have any predictions? I haven't. We haven't. We haven't touched on anything that i haven't thought of peterson the only other one you wrote down was that i I wrote down a prediction for was mario movie oh yeah what do you think (sighs) i think it's gonna be very i i want to say it's gonna be good it's not it's gonna be very medium uh it is it gonna be bad no 
Mm -hmm. it's going to be very fan servicey. You're just going to see like tons of fan service and you'll laugh and it will be pretty good. I don't think anyone's going to, you're going to hate Chris Pratt's voice in it. I think it's just going to be fine. I think Pratt's vanilla enough to where you Mm -hmm. will forget about it mid movie. Yeah. Um, It's going to be fine. It's not going to be amazing. Even for kids, kids are going to be like, that was fun. And then they'll like, Maybe watch it one more Forget time on a streaming it. service, but yeah, it's not going to be incredible. It's going to be like Sonic level. Do you think it will merit a sequel? That's the ultimate question here. Is this going to be three of these? Ugh. They yeah. will make a sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, they probably shouldn't, but they will definitely. Shit. Well, I look forward to that. That's a good prediction. Yeah. All right. Uh, keeping the theme because we're lazy going seasonal we've got some gaming resolutions for this year this is really i ended up going not as uh pie in the sky as i usually do on these i have some actionable ones okay uh so i want to hear yours peterson well my first one i you know it's funny i wrote down a very similar note i put i always make unrealistic ones (laughs) So (laughs) we should get married. (laughs) That was like my legit first thing I wrote right after this. So my first one, I will not buy a full priced game this year. So what are you going to do about fucking Hogwarts legacy? Dude, don't worry. You're going to have to wait. No, don't worry. There will be a 10% off pre-order sale. dude. And that's when I'll get it. Can I be honest with you as hype as I am on that game? The thought of dropping $70 on the first... I haven't dropped $70 on a game, ever. And I don't know if I'm ready to do it. And I might join you in, like, waiting for that 10% sale. I like that. I, I do feel like we'll play this game pretty early. Yeah. Um, but but I'm not... Look, I'm not I'm not going to play this day one. I just know I'm not I'm not, not going gonna to miss out on anything. That's the thing. And, like, I I've, we've been burned enough times to know that you wait. For yeah. at least that first round of reviews to come in. Uh, as, as as hype as I am on Hogwarts Legacy, I don't think I'm going to get FOMO on it. Even though I do think that the, everyone I know is going to be playing it and talking about it. I think it's going to be enough of a, a media enough of a game that it's not going to be like, oh, I have to play it. I have to play it. I'm missing out on this stuff. Uh, it felt like that with like, for example, like Valheim, when like Valheim was all hot and everyone was playing it. Felt like I was always going to miss out if I wasn't. But I think I could wait on Hogwarts Legacy. Just not long. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to wait long, but I feel like we're going to. Huh. I, I'm not going to play it day one, probably. I don't know. Who knows? You can let them iron I, look, out those I bugs. might be on. I might have a huge itch for it right at the mm-hmm. time. And if I do, I will drop $70 on it. Yeah. Like, that's a thing I would do if I'm really jonesing for it. Right. Or if it comes out and the reviews are just smoking. It's yeah, like the pr- I'll probably be like, well, I got to do it. I got to. Yeah, if it. this gets Elden Ring reception, you yeah. might not be able to keep me no. away from yeah, it. Yeah, I'll do it for sure. But if it's like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's got like 80, 85. Yeah, I'm waiting. I feel like, yeah, dude, off. even give me that 20% off or 10% off and I'll get it. That'd right? be nice. Um, uh, okay. Go ahead. What do you I got? have one. I would like to find one more, just one more survival game that I like as much as Raft, Planet Crafter, and Valheim. Okay. Those are my three gold standard survival games. I haven't, I've played a couple others. None of them have spoken to me quite like those have. I'd like one more because at least I'd say with Planet Crafter and Valheim, they are not done. And I think both of them I'd say are probably at like 50, 60% baked. And I'm already loving them and revisiting them and able to go back. Raft was about almost done when I started playing it, but I still did do that, get to do a couple playthroughs. So I think finding a, another one that may be in that early stage and jumping on, um, that would be something I'd like. How about you, Peterson? Your turn. Um, sorry, do one more. Do one more really yeah. quickly. Um, I well, okay. So these are my my more. These are kind of the same category, but I would like to build Jenna's PC. I got her a Steam Deck for Christmas and a Steam Deck dock because I thought that would buy me some time um, where she could use that as like her PC for a couple of months or whatever. 
and it'll play like most of the things she wants to play. Um, but yeah, I think we're I've been keeping an eye out on these all the GPU drama, hoping that the prices drop, hoping that the competitors like Intel and AMD get in there and, and shake up the market. And I feel like it's getting kind of warm. Mm, and yeah. I think it may be time to wade back into the PC building uh, atmosphere, start figuring out what the world looks like now, because I built mine three, four years ago. So it's been a minute and I wanted to make her I wanted to build her a water cooled, a liquid cooled machine. So that's a whole new thing I've never done before. So that that's the one. And then part of that is, I don't know, I probably haven't told anyone. I stole Jenna's keyboard. She had this really cool mechanical keyboard and she wasn't using it. And I wanted to try it. She's like, just try it because it's so much smaller than the one I was using. I had this big Corsair, huge footprint on my tiny desk. So I tried her smaller keyboard and then I never gave it back. So I have to buy my own. So I need to build Jenna a PC special JD keyboard and get my own keyboard and return hers. So I have one. uh, And I think we I do this one every year. I want to find a new like long term game to play with the crew. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, Because and when I say long term, I mean like four, five, six months. Oh, where one nice. that we that we like really fall in love with and play for a little while. It's been a minute since we've had one. We like to do shooters. We were hoping Warzone would get us back in, but Warzone is like Not real good. medium. Like I have yeah. me and Steven will play it sometimes, but uh, it's never the full crew. We're all kind of in that place looking for something, and I think it's Feel about that. time. And yeah, I want to find a game that we're going to play for months, right? That we're just into and in love with. Um, and I don't know if that's an old game. I don't know if that's a, I feel like it might have to be a new game. It has to be like an indie or something like something that comes out of nowhere, like Valheim. Yeah, now, I have the same thing. I put find a good multiplayer game to play with Peterson. We got to find one. It's- we haven't had shit, dude. The last time. That we all had like a good thing going, I feel like was the OG drop of Valheim in March of last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Or was that last year? Was that that wasn't the OG? That was 2021. And then we had chivalry for about what a month or two? Chivalry for a month or so. Yeah. And then Overwatch for like a couple weeks. But we yeah. haven't had something that just like just grabs hit. you and holds on. Uh, and then like, oh, I was like texting you every night on Discord. Like, hey, you're going to be on. You're going to be on. You're yep. going to be on. Like we need we, have, we like, need another one. I feel months. like we're itching for one and we mm-hmm. just can't find it. I, we can't find it. God. Um, But we'll get there. I think we'll get there. It's got to be some some magical game. Um, I just feel like the market has not come through recently. There hasn't even like a lot of the new ones coming out. Like, again, I play games with other people. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we play Warzone 2. We've been playing Dark Tide. We played Sea of Thieves for a long time. Like, even if I found another Sea of Thieves, like something where I just the crew is like, hey, you guys hopping on. Let's play. You know, dude, you know, it feels like feels like we need a new genre. Like we've we've been on Battle Royales for so long. It feels like. All right. Let's do. Can we get something fresh in here? Let's get like, like a new take. Mix up the multiplayer genre a little bit. It's, it's not an easy ask, uh, and people try, but uh, uh, but yeah, it's not easy. But yeah, I think we're ripe for something like something exciting, something fresh, something new. Okay, yeah. those are all my resolutions. Do you have any more? Um, no, I don't have any more. But I didn't write down very many because I've just been too sick. Uh, to think I started right. There's a good one. Don't get COVID for the third time this year. I don't want to get COVID again. No. Oh gosh. Yeah. That's not really a gaming resolution. That's kind of a life resolution. (laughs) Oh, 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 the other one that I was thinking about and it's kind of a lame one, but, uh, I just want to play more games on my, uh, steam deck. So I did buy some games with the steam deck in mind. Yeah. But, uh, a lot of my, like, you know, just my, my, uh, gaming time right now, I'm just on my computer already. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, 
uh, hanging out upstairs or something, watching a show, playing the Steam Deck. So you know what game has been blowing my mind? Jenna's been playing on the Steam Deck like an, an ungodly amount. Fallout Shelter, dude. No, oh, really. In terms of that niche you're talking about, like just playing on the couch or yeah, watching yeah, yeah. something, it's like that perfect game because you don't need to pay a ton of attention. You just kind of like monitor your your shelter. But I never thought it's so much better on that than it was like I used to play on my phone. It sucked. Well, yeah, and we play. I, we, I feel like there's a lot has changed since we played. They added a on ton of stuff to it way yeah. back in the day. Because yeah, I mean, like the game still game exists. Now. I still see it. Yeah, and I'm like, how is they, this game hanging on? Yep. It, because it's still good. Jenna has no interest in the Fallout universe, and she's put like 20 hours in this game to nice. sync. So, super funny. All right, let's move on to do some dice. Dice, dice, dice of destiny. All right, Dice of Destiny is this game we play at the end of every week, every episode. Except for we took a couple weeks off because of the Blursties. Yeah, but, we don't want to taint the blursties. Yeah, it's too much time. Too much time going on with other things. Um, but a million years ago, I rolled a story rich game, and I think it was like 30 bucks. Yep. And brief story. I went to the story rich uh tag on Steam. Useless. Fucking useless. Like there, it's everything's on there. Every single game that has a story. Is has this tag. It's crazy. So I went through Steam for probably the better part of like an hour and just couldn't find anything. Nothing. Nothing spoke to me. I was just like, oh, I felt so sad. And so I, on a lark, went to EGS, to my Epic Game Store library. All of these millions of, yeah, exactly. All of these free games that... uh that I've downloaded over like the year or two that uh, they've been doing this. And I found one. I don't even know why it just jumped. It just jumped off that page to me called the captain. It's like the artwork or something. Cause it, it honestly did the same thing for me. I was like, this game looks really good. So weird. So weird because I do have like dozens of games there and a lot of them are story rich, but I clicked on this one and it's, it's pure story game. Like it is just a story game. And in the purest sense. And I was like, that's awesome. So I was so excited. It's free um, and I already have it. And so I looked at it and it is a it's kind of like a point and click. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of remnant. It reminds me a bit of FTL and it's got a turn based combat system. That's kind of like FTL as well. So I I started playing it before this episode. And got so hooked into it, Peterson had to text me because I wasn't paying. I was like, oh, shit. It's dude, it's fun so far. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, I haven't played a game like this. I haven't really played a game. Um, I think, well, I have played point and click, but this one's a little different. It just came out in September of last year, so it's really new. It is new. Yeah. Um, And it's. It's a retro inspired adventure game. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. It, and it, it looks like I played a lot of I've talked about this before, but like Space Quest games. And that's legit what it looks like. It looks like a, a Space Quest game that I used to play back in the day. Yeah, like just to spoil one of the very, very first things, I landed on this planet and found a guy that had frozen himself in like a cryo, like a makeshift cryo thing. And he had a note that he put on it that said, don't wake me if more than 50 years have passed. And so I go on the computer and I see that a thousand years have passed. And uh, I'm like, well, I, I should I see an option on the screen that says reset. I was like, that seems like a dick move because his wife had sent him some like emails, you know, a thousand years ago. So I woke him up and once and I told him the truth because that's what I do in real life. And he was devastated and he wouldn't move. Yeah. And I was like, it. Yeah, I was like locked out. But when I looked at the reset button on the computer, I really could have reset it and then lied to him when he came out of the cryo chamber and been like, oh, dude, I just got here right after you froze yourself, like minutes later. And he would have believed me. And I'm pretty sure would have come with me on the ship. Nice. And like helped me out. And so it was things like that. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like kicking myself. That's the very first mission thing. And so in terms of like the adventure and branching storylines of ancient 
RPGs of yore, I'm like, okay, fucking okay, All right, let's do live this. With it. Let's do this. Let's have some long term consequences. So, yeah, the captain, it's on absolutely everything. Yeah. Steam, Switch, GOG, uh, Xbox, obviously EGS. Um, and I will have a full review for that for us for next week. Sweet. And uh, that's it. So to play us out, we'll have the intro music from the captain, which is pretty dope. And I liked it. And there's a good story to it. Oh, also, also they're building the the big MacGuffin machine to save Earth in the Utah desert. There we go. So yeah, Perfect Utah makes a little it. cameo in this game. It's very neat. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. Go vote on the Blursties. Do it. Vote. Get your votes in. Vote, 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 vote. I haven't voted yet, so I will actually be voting this week. Oh, shit. We can vote. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, two more votes. You guys. haven't voted right. yet either. I haven't. I don't know that I've ever voted on... in the blur season no before way. now that you mention it. I always I do. Know. I don't know. I don't think I have. I was vote felt... for multiple accounts. I want to skew the results as much as I was going to say, I just put my thumb on the scale and just change the votes later if I want. <laughs> I don't like that result. It just good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm JD logging off. This is Peterson going AFK. Peterson Productions. Oh, yeah.